Okay, just zooming into the hill again. All the deer have stood up. They've all got their ears pierced, per perked up as well, as if they they know I'm on the move here. I was on the other side a minute ago, and then they've all stood up. And it's taken a while to focus. See them all? There they go, look. All stood up on the hill there. Sure, it's, it's that, it's beautifully warm. I was right over there and that's the settlement area I think I was actually walking on it. That's the settlement, it's almost like a mini hill fort isn't it? No, I'm really glad that I decided to just locate on, not go off on one of the hikes round, but to stay in one area and have a good look. And uh, by doing that I've, I've seen a lot of deer today. But I'm walking up this hill and it is hot, it's true. It's March the 24th and it's a lovely day. Now it was a bit breezy when I was over there, I must admit. But it's nice and cosy, it's just cosy, I feel really cosy. What I'm remembering is now, right okay I'm going uphill a bit, but guess what? This is the only bit of hill I've got to do. Then it's all downhill. Do you know what I mean? I've enjoyed exploring this bit here, this big Narcombe, and I've been over to the other side and over there. I can dig up more history. I've seen the deer, on deer on the hill, on the side there. They've been there all day sunbathing with another set that are on the other side. Of course the stags are somewhere else, they don't seem to live together. A lot of them, isn't there? A lot of them, and they all look very healthy. Anyway, I'm just wondering about the two people that I saw in the distance. I'm sure one waved to me, and then they were going off in the opposite direction of to me and then they turned back and they seemed to be following me as I was going over there. Then they turned back and went wherever they were going. I thought I just wondered if they they knew me. I intend to come out here a lot this summer. I really do want to come out much more and explore because it doesn't take me long to get here. And if I do a Saturday I can do the longer walk. If I do a Saturday, I can do a longer walk. Now I reckon, this is my personal belief, that there's another way back to Bitnoller following that track there. I reckon there is. I could easily bump into those two people, you know. There's somebody over there. They're the ones who've had the fire, I think. There's probably been a hunt on. There might have been a hunt today. I'm glad all those deer got away. Don't expect they can touch them when they're on private land. Now this could be the water board coming. There is something to do with the water board up here. Makes you wonder. Makes you wonder what Inkley Point are planning, doesn't it? Now I've decided to go down Weakham because, or go down the top and divert a different way because that's what I'm going to do because basically I've come out for the day, there's no pressure at the moment, so I'm going to go Weakham Hill but instead of going over the top I'm going to follow another track that I've never done when I get on the top. That's what I'm going to do today. It should take me to the Coleridge Walk. Now, because I do actually know this place very well, I think I know it all, but I don't. And really, I should bring the map out with me, because there's lots and lots of little tracks I don't know. You know, they're weaving about everywhere, look. 
Yeah, that's the water board up to something over there. They said they were doing some sort of works here. There's another way down, I know. There's another way down. But I just feel... <laughs> okay, I've got a winter jumper on, I really know it. I know I've got a winter jumper on. But I'm going to need it. When you get in that wind, it's quite nippy. So today we won't be doing Holford, not today. It puts all stress on me to say to myself, you've got to do a Holford every time. I don't have to. Uh, only when, the only times I can really do Holford is when I've got the extra hours, because I do want to do Dalesborough Hill Fort over there. I actually want to walk right round it. And next time I come, I won't be sort of, sort of going off track. It'll be straight up and over. That's what it'll be. Straight up and over. Right, well, follow this track for a minute. If you go up there, that's um, Beacon Hill. I think. I think that's big and ill. Where's the trig point? And it's taking the cameras, don't forget the cameras are fading on me quite a lot these days. Could be a trig point there. Might not be Beacon Hill. No, it is. That is Beacon Hill, Sheila. That is Beacon Hill. That could be the trig point there. Mcnaller Post is over there. I think. I do not even I get um, muddled up a bit at times. Even I do. Because that's, if you go up there, you go Lady's Edge, round like that to Holford, or you go down, right? Down there, that's Holford. Okay? In many ways, it's a good idea that I come out before all the huge vegetation appears. Because it's the, the landscape is quite naked at the moment. And you can see, you can see lots of features, much more. And I've grown to know them over the years. I just hope this leads to where I want to be. On Wecom Hill. In fact, this is Wecom Hill I'm on. But I've got to get the right path. So I'm keeping my eye. I can't see a bit not a post yet. But it should be sort of round there where all those paths are meeting. Bit can on her post. But in theory, this path should link up with a path coming from Bicknoller for me. I mean, I've done all the paths right the way round. I've been up and I've been down. I've been over and round. And I love every single bit of it. Love it. Now, it could be... Yeah, there's Watch It over there. I remember when Georgia was at a concert... Wecom Coombe is down. What I'm doing today, there's Big Mama Post. Where is it? Where is it? There's Big Mama Post. So look. That's Big Mama Post. It's a junction point. Dalesborough Hill for big big hike. Hopefully when I get around to doing that my knee would have improved. I do feel as if I haven't been on a like a big hike, but I've been exploring different areas and it all takes time. It'll be nearly two o'clock now. I don't like getting home too late. But I'm enjoying being out. I really am being out in the sunshine. So this is where I'm walking now. 
This is Weakham Hill. Now, what I'm going to do, a little bit, a tiny bit of exploring, which I've not done before. I've been down here, I have been down here several times, even by accident. Sometimes I find things out by accident, by just wandering off. Anyway, what I'm going to do, when I get to a point where I normally just go over the top and down, and I'm back in bit Noller, just like that. No, I'm going to carry on down. I've never done that. Now, not far away from me on this hill, because I was right over there. A minute ago, hour or so ago, or less, I'm zooming into a tree. See that tree there? I was right by that tree, and I've even taken a picture of it when I was over there. I was right over there, and see those clumps? I was over there. It didn't take long. The big trees that I went in earlier today. You can move around this landscape before. If it, like if I suddenly said, right, I'm going to do the trick point, I'd be up there and I'd be looking over here. I'd say, God, are you, you're over there, Sheila, already. Now, sometimes if we have lovely weather this early, we can have a horrible July and August. Not always, but sometimes if it comes too early. But of course, it's saving the energy bills, isn't it? The reason I think, to be quite honest, why the energy companies are whacking everything up is because of global warming. <laughs> it's global warming. Basically, they... They know we don't need to put us much. They're, they're just doubling. They're doubling our flipping costs. That's what they're doing. We should be able to have a be much more comfortable life. But they know. They said, right, everyone doesn't have to put their heat on. So we're going to charge you twice for it. And that's what they're doing. Now, because they feel guilty... Although taxpayers are paying for this, they're giving everyone in certain bands a hundred and fifty it's either hundred and fifty or hundred and forty pounds next month. Certain everyone who's in those bands qualifies for a hundred and forty or fifty pounds. It's a one off payment, it's called a rebate. Then the other thing that people aren't too happy about is in October they're giving everyone 200, is it 200 or 140? They're giving to every, everybody some money for the heating for the winter. And then next spring, for four years, you've got to pay off £40 a month extra. Now, don't you think that's tight? Some people are, don't want it and they're asking to be allowed to refuse it because it's a loan. And a loan goes on your credit rating. So, but if you want to get through the winter next year, you might welcome it. But you've got to pay it back and then freebie. Well, I mean, pensioners, I'm just wondering what's going to happen about pensioners. Because we get a lump sum, 200 quid every November towards our heating. Now, is, are they going to mess with that? It'd be interesting to hear what the budget was like today. So there was a mini budget today because people are worried about petrol rises, fuel rises, and all that. But I just wondered about if, as a pension, will I still get my winter fuel allowance? Or are they going to mess about with that? What about my warm discount I get? It's a one-off payment. I don't have to pay it back. I get £140 every February. It gets me through February only. There isn't enough money. Now, this year it, it got used in a month. Now, last year it lasted six weeks. I'm not doing anything any different. I use hot water bottles. I don't heat the bedroom hardly ever. Do you know what I mean? Really, really, really. I don't really heat it, basically. Um, so, most of the flat is like a morgue when it's freezing in the peak of the winter. I just hide in my front room, which is small. It is cosy. 
I've got everything in there that I need and I just live in the box. And I won't put heating on till the end of October. I won't even touch the heating. And I try to get it, I try to last as long as I can into November before I put any heating on. I will use hot water bottles to start with. When I'm at my desk, I'll use hot water bottles. And then, if it is very cold in November, I will put on the small heater. A little tiny heater, it just takes the edge off. So I don't like my knees getting cold. After that, I'm still strict and will not have the heating on all day apart from special occasions like Christmas. And when it is really freezing, I will put it on. I'll hang out as long as I can and then I'll put it on. And sometimes I will leave it on all day. But I don't know if that will be able to do that for the future because everything's doubling. At the moment, I can manage that. I've been managing. A lot of money though, every week goes in. Every week it can be 30, easily 30 pound a week. I'm not heating a three bedroom home or anything, I'm heating a small flat, one room. I'm very thrifty with hot water. I don't have hot water. When I wash up, I heat up a big um, stewing pot of hot water. And I have, I'm very... Don't you want to know about what I get up to, eh?